Hi there! Today I just want to talk really briefly about the difference a vowel can make. About the difference that our choice of vowel on a given pitch can make, in particular in terms of vocal registration, but also in terms of the efficiency of the instrument and how things feel. So, if you're not familiar with the concept of vowel modification, I will be talking in a lot more detail about that in another video. But today I just want to introduce you really briefly to this concept of the vowel determining the register or the difference that a vowel can make. So when we're talking about registration, as I've mentioned in previous videos, registration to me isn't purely a physiological phenomenon. There are also acoustical factors that we need to consider. And when we're talking about the vowel, the vowel is our resonance. The vowel, how we shape our instruments to create that particular vowel sound, is what determines the acoustical properties, the spectral characteristics of our resonator tract. And so, depending on where we are at in pitch, some vowels will work better than others on a given pitch. And that again has to do with the unique acoustical properties of those particular vowels, how they're shaping that vocal tract when we create those sounds. And so I'm going to just introduce you to this concept really, really briefly, and I'm going to demonstrate something for you. And hopefully you can hear the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing a five note scale on the vowel O. And I'm going to place this scale in a specific spot in my range so that there is an acoustical shift that needs to happen or not. And I'm just going to sing it. I'm going to start in M1. I'm going to start in a chest kind of dominant sound. And then I am going to maintain that same resonance strategy as I move higher in the scale. Oh. Now, I don't know if you heard what happened there, right? I got louder and louder and louder. It kind of went into a yell coordination, right? It sounded very shouty. And if you were paying really, really close attention, you'll notice what happened here. I started to lower my jaw and open my mouth. And the vowel was no longer O at that point. If you listen back to this, you'll hear that that vowel actually modified to an aw. There was an aw-ishness about it. And if I'd gone probably a couple notes up higher yet, it would have sounded more and more and more like aw. It's not the same vowel. but in order for me to stay in that exact same resonance strategy, that's kind of what I have to do. So now, let's listen to what happens if I try to sing an O, starting from the same pitch, the same coordination, in that kind of M1 chest voice coordination. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to maintain the purest O vowel that I know how to maintain. My former singing teacher hated my O's, never liked them. Um, I'm not sure why exactly, but he didn't like how I defined them how I formed them. So I'm going to maintain that O all the way up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch myself in the mirror here because I want to make sure that I'm not moving anything. I'm not lowering that jaw. I'm not opening my mouth. Now I don't know if you heard the difference there, right? Instead of going into that really strident kind of sound, instead of it getting increasingly louder and louder and louder and sounding, sounding more and more like a yell, the vowel turned over because what I was doing was I was stabilizing my vocal tract. I wasn't letting the larynx rise. I wasn't dropping the jaw and opening the mouth. So I actually let that vowel, we call it turning over. The vowel went into a different kind of resonance relationship with the harmonics of the sung pitch. I was actually allowing for an acoustical shift. The vowel actually turned over. I was still in an M1 coordination. Physiologically, I was still in that same, we'll say, chest voice coordination. But there was a difference in the sound. And that's what we would call closed voice. And you can really hear this in a lot of singers when they're singing these sounds that the vowel just kind of acoustically shifts and it turns over and it prevents them from getting this really splatty, yelly kind of sound. And again, I'm going to get into more detail about this in another video that I'm going to dedicate to vowel modification. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, how we do it, why we do it. I don't want to bog you down with excessive information. I don't want to confuse training. I don't want to confuse singing for you and make it seem a lot more complicated than it is. 
However, I do firmly believe that having an understanding about the acoustics of the vowels that we're singing, understanding which vowels work better on which pitches on account of their unique spectral characteristics, acoustical properties, if we have that understanding, we're actually going to fare much better moving through the passaggio because now we can make different vowel choices. Now we know the effect that certain shapings of our vocal tract have on the acoustics, but also on the efficiency of the vocal instrument and the sound, as well as how things feel for us. I would just really encourage you to play around with this concept. Try it both ways. Allow the jaw to lower and the mouth to open as you move up the scale, and then try it again and keep everything really consistent to the best of your ability. And hear what happens. Hear what happens acoustically to the sound. And try it on different vowels and just play around with it. And I think you're actually gonna like some of what you hear. And you may find that some of those pitches that you're kind of struggling with and don't really like how they sound will actually start to sound and feel better when you allow that acoustical shifting to happen. And so I will get into more detail about vowel modification with you. I just wanted to share with you this little concept again of the vowel determining the register. And again, we're talking more acoustically when it comes to register. There are different ways that we can approach vocal registration, different ways that we can approach vowel modification, and I will get into those in that video. If you haven't already done so and you're really interested in this topic, please consider subscribing to this channel, and that way you'll be notified when I post that next video. Thank you so much for watching.